Give me a second here, guys. I'm just getting my camera, trying to line it up here and get some of this. There you go. Some of that uh, glare off. Um. Okay. Uh, I need that light. Let me just raise that up just there. Okay. I've been asked um, quite a few times in, about cleaning an airbrush. Now, I had a couple of videos up um, discussing how to clean an airbrush. Um, the ins and outs, you know, the very the, the easy way to do it, you know. Um, so I want to show you guys how, what I do. This is not rocket science, guys. You don't need a bunch of super duper, you know, sonic cleaners or, or expensive paper points. Well, they're not expensive, but paper points. You don't need any of that. It's good to have it, but it's not something that you absolutely need. You know, somewhere down the line, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Somewhere down the line, you are going to have to clean the nozzle out really good. Um, regular solvents and cleaners usually, you know, don't, don't get everything. Like on an airbrush here, uh, you know, you'll get a buildup inside the nozzle. You'll get a buildup back up in here. Sometimes you get a buildup in here. The fluid will come through those seals. People, you know, they're like, oh, my God, I got stuff coming through my seals. Happens all the time. The problem um, people have is they don't main, they don't flush their airbrushes really, really good. Eventually, look, uh, this airbrush right here has not been cleaned properly, like stripped down in a few months um, since I did the last uh, uh, a last cleaning video. And I've used it. For everything, I use this airbrush for um, all my base coats. I use this. Uh, this is the badge uh, Patriot 105. I use it for my clears. I use it for my primers. I've used it for for base coats. Um, I used it for this. I used it for for this. You know, the lay down the paints on that, the base coats on that. So. I use it for many things. This is one of my, this is my go-to airbrush. Um, I don't even use my Iwatas that much anymore. These are the three airbrushes that I use the most. Now, they're all going to have to be torn down today because I haven't given them a good, good cleaning. Do I need to put them inside of a, uh, a sonic cleaner? Hell no. Guys, the sonic cleaner, for for what we do, in the hobby, for hey, Vinny, for what we do in the hobby, a sonic cleaner is actually a waste of money. You don't need a sonic cleaner. If you want one, by all means, man, you know, it's your money, you know, do what you want with it, but you don't really need it. Simple cleaning uh, uh, a regimen will, will, for the most part, handle everything you need. So let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, Lenny says, damn phone, not loading anything I can hear, but but can see it with company laptop. It will not play YouTube. Oh, man, that sucks, Lenny. All right. I'm going to tear apart this. Like I said, I've been using this airbrush exclusively, you know, for everything. I mean, it's right on my desk here. So, you know, anybody that's been in the Hangouts with us, they know whenever I'm getting ready to paint something, I reach over and I grab this airbrush. It's on a little rack to the, to the right of me. So the first thing I want to do, guys, is let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. We'll zoom in a little bit. Now, as I've said, I've, anybody that knows me knows when they're watching me airbrush, I flush this airbrush after every use. If you look in there, uh, look up. Oh, man, it's clean, right? No, it's not, buddy. And I'll show you. So let's start off. We'll pull the needle first. There's the needle. Now, I told you, you can see that this needle, you know, that I've cleaned it. It's supposedly clean. Now, what am I going to use for this? Well, I can use many different things. I can use isopropyl. I can use mineral spirits. My go-to acetone. This is not going to hurt the seals as long as you flush it out. That's a myth. we got solvent-proof seals. Don't let anybody tell you you can't use acetone. They don't know what they're talking about. We've been using acetone to clean our brushes out since the 70s. 
as long as you flush this out and don't let it sit in your airbrush overnight, you'll be fine. We can use acetone or I can use the Jesus juice. I'm going to use a combination of the acetone and the Jesus juice. And that's my that's what I use to clean my airbrushes, guys. I've got a, a couple of Badger 150s that I've had for 30 plus years and, and they're still fine. All right. So, paper towel. Now, as I said, that that looks clean, but if you look closely, you see that right there? That I flush it, I flush it, I clean it, I flush it, but you still get something that sits about right here where that seal is. Right around in here. There's a little paint that gets in there and it cakes up there. Don't matter how good you clean it, you're gonna get some in there. And it doesn't matter if it's an Iwata, harder and steam back. Now watch this guys. This needle is clean. It was cleaned. Look. See that? Right there. That's the flesh tones I used when I did this. So before I use before I use the airbrush again on another project, doesn't matter if I cleaned it out, you know, stripped it or not stripped it, but flushed it and everything, I always pull the needle and I always wipe it. This is the other thing I do, and I'll show you guys this in a little bit. That's uh four out steel wool. All right, let me uh, this thing is moving bouncing back and forth, so let me lock it in. And there we go. So it doesn't keep moving on me here. Uh, let me get that right about there. All right. So Again, this is the Badger uh, Patriot. So we're going to take apart, take the back piece off. And for this, I need glasses. We're going to pull this piece off. I forgot to get the red gap. I'm going to need to get that. So I'm going to pull this out. That piece there, set that off to the side, the trigger. Yeah. Now, let's get to the front. Now for that, I use this. Now, it's an Iwata tool kit. The so-called, the paper points that everybody's raving about, been around forever. Um, beeswax. Pliers. These pliers are, are they have the Teflon piece here, or the, the so they don't mar up the chrome. So let's get this off. So first things first, I'm going to take that cap off, set that off to the side. There's my uh, my nozzle. You can see right inside there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of build up there. So then, I loosen that. There's my nozzle. I can see in here. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I get it tighter. Um, I can already see a buildup. See that? There's a buildup there. So, I'm going to pull this off because I want to get to that valve there. And that's got a little cruddiness on it. Okay, so here we go. Now, there's uh, Teflon seals in here. Again, you guys, you could use mineral spirits, you can use IPA, you can use uh, paint thinner, uh, acrylic paint thinner, you can use um, UMP cleaner, you can use whatever you want. What you're going to see me use is what I use. That's acetone. So what I'm going to do with the acetone is I'm going to drop my nozzle in there, right there. This can use a little cleaning. So, take a little bit on a, on a cotton bud 
and just wipe it down. Doesn't need to be soaked. Doesn't need all of that. All right. You know, I, I'm I'm watching here. You know, you know, guys that have started airbrushing. You know, a year ago and now they're experts. I'm not an expert. These things were all learned by me over time, and I still don't know everything. I still ask when I talk to Ken. I ask him questions all the time. You know, of um, you know how the airbrush is running. You know, what should I look for? You know, et cetera, et cetera. What, what, if I did something, if the, if the airbrush is doing this, what should I look for? Most of the time, you guys can figure it out yourselves if you've been airbrushing for a while. So, all right, that's, I'm going to put a little bit in there. Just dunk it a little bit and then move that piece up and down just to make sure it's, there's no uh, catching on it. Now, I got these little brushes here. These are nylon brushes, guys. Uh, don't get the don't get the metal ones. Get the nylon ones. The metal ones will mess up your, especially if you got a cheap Chinese airbrush. It'll mess all that up. So I'm just gonna scrub around the the end here, just to make sure that there's nothing left on there. Looks like so. All right, that's done. Moving in and out. I forgot one thing, and I'm give me a second here. Um, you're gonna use some of this red gab, the needle juice. I've got some my water needle juice. Either one will work, guys. Either one will be fine. So before I get to all that, so I don't forget, I'll take a little bit of the red gab. Um, and just a very little bit, and this is one of the only times that you'll see me doing this because I had acetone on there. So I, whatever lubrication was on there, I just stripped it off. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to move that up and down to make sure it lubricates real good. This is done. That's going to get back on there. So I don't want a bunch of parts laying around all over the place, so what I'm going to do is put that back on again beeswax you take a little bit that's all you need right there take a little bit of this roll it in your finger and right on the threads here make sure you don't get it on anything but the threads so right on the threads there's some beeswax so I'll take this you won't before I do that um, get this a little wet and run that in through here. That seems that's pretty clean. You want to make sure you clean everything out. That looks good. Again, this airbrush hasn't been stripped out in a lot in I don't know months. This is uh been a while in coming. Now I want that to move back and forth real good. So I'm going to drop a little. I'm going to show you how to get rid of all this too. I don't want that sitting in that airbrush. So I'll make sure I get that all up and down in there. Clean that off. See that? Well, I don't know if you can see it, but all right. Now I'll get this back on so I don't lose it. Hand tight it. You don't need to really go any further than that. All right. Now let's get to this uh, this nozzle. Before I do that, I'm going to look down the, the shank here. Now see, for that I need light, guys. So let me get my little... You get a lot of buildup inside there. Many times you think your airbrush is clean. It's not. So what you want to do is, um, this is a little, this comes with that Iwata kit. It's a little light. So what, come on. It doesn't turn on half the time though either. I think the battery finally died. Yeah, battery finally died. There it is. There it goes. So now, you can see I'm looking down it and I'm checking to make sure everything is cool. 
looks good to me. Now I'll look, I'll look down through here and I could see some gunk in there. I'll, I'll get the camera a little closer so you guys can see it also. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some gunky gunky in there. Yeah, all right. So, you can do one of two things. You can either use your brushes, or you can use a Q-tip. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of this acetone, and just on the inside. Now, I'm going to show you something, guys. There, look how filthy that is. See that? Let me lock this in. It's jumping back and forth again. Oh, there we go. Let me zoom in. Right there. All right. Look how filthy that is. So you want to go in there and you want to wipe everything down real good. Get as far as you can. Look at that. This is a clean airbrush, guys. This is something that I take care of and I clean every time I use it. I don't strip it down, but I give it a good cleaning. Look at that. See that? Now I'll come in with the dry end. Do this. It's about as clean as you're going to get it. Now I'm going to come on this side here. Same thing. Take the tip of it. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Filthy. So you want to get in here because that's where that, that nozzle sits, especially on an eye water. The nozzle sits, or I'm sorry, the Badger Patriot. The nozzle sits on. It's a pressure fit nozzle. So you do this. I'll get this other side. I need another. I need a clean one. Hold on. Um, if you guys, uh, I get these at um, Target. You can find them at Walmart. These are the, they're not like the, like the, the Tamiya ones, but they're called precision tips. You know, the women use them for like, you know, this or for makeup. And they come in like a little point like that. You know, these are really good for when you're cleaning stuff out. So let me get a couple of these out here. What does Brian say? Airbrushes. Ugh. Ha. Just kidding. Take it easy. Back to the bench. Busted out some minis today. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to be working on a few of them myself there, Brian. So I want to get in here. Now, look at that, guys. You see that? This is a clean airbrush. I can't stress that enough. This is something that 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 I would have told somebody. I tell people, yeah, my airbrushes are clean until you really do this. And this is what gets you in trouble, guys. When you don't clean your airbrushes really good, this stuff will. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, Daniel, because there, there's a, there's. I don't I don't tell people not to use them. You know, um, I have one, I've and I use one maybe once a year. I'll tear everything apart, you know, and I'll throw them in there, and I'll let them sit for about five or ten minutes. But it's not something you really need if you're just doing this, you know. Um, but if if it works for you, man, by all means, man, get down with your bad self. There's, you know, look at this, guys. That, that a clean airbrush. So I'm going to do it again just to make sure that every bit of gunk is out of there. Still more, see? I'm just getting it right in the front here. I'm not going too far in, just right in the front here, just cleaning it all out. There it is. Now I'm gonna take my brush. Oh, that leaked out. All right, let me get a, where's my glass jar? That leaked out, I'm dumbass. Ate right through the plastic. Uh, where did I do my little glass bowls? Yeah, let's use this. Where's I doing it? Okay. Okay, there. I got that into a little glass bowl off to the side, a little steel bowl. All right, where was I? I'm going to take uh, this guy right here, dump it in my cleaner. I just put some Jesus juice in there, guys. Dump it in my cleaner, and then right from the front here. Let 
Just do this. Get the smaller, the smaller of all of them, so I can run it all the way through inside there. Let me see if anything comes out. Nope. So this is fairly clean. Now, when you stick this, uh, these little uh, brushes in there, be careful when you get all the way in there, guys. You don't want to go past that seal on the other end. You don't want to touch that seal or, 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 you know, in any way um, move that thing around, especially on a Badger, they are, like on the Chrome. Or the or the soltar because you know that bed that they're they're fine too man it's like you start messing with that you're gonna have trouble so that's clean that's how I clean it guys um I'm gonna go in here one more time just to make sure that nothing is in there get inside here the color cup that's clean. You don't need a a, a a a sonic cleaner, although you know if you use one, that's cool. A lot of times, guys don't realize they throw this piece in there, and they don't take this out, the the valve, the, the air valve, and they throw this inside of a sonic cleaner. Well, this the sonic cleaner does this, it moves everything around. It it cleans by vibration, by sound. This right here will rattle around inside your the the, the valve here, and over time, you'll ruin it. I remember talking to uh, Norm Lejoie a few years ago, about two years ago, and he was telling me, I think he had an Iwata revolution or, a, or an eclipse, one of the two, and he put it in there, and it rattled around in there, and it ruined inside here. So, you guys, if you use one, hey, whatever. You don't need one. I have one because I used to clean them for people. They'd send them to me. And, and I would throw the parts in there when you can't get something loose or you can't get, you know, the, the crud won't come out. I don't care what you use. You know, gasoline, it ain't coming out. But that's very rare that you need one. And then I remember speaking with Ken and I, and I asked him, I says, you know, you know, what's uh, sonic cleaners? What do you think about them? He says, you know, you don't really need them. You know, if you, if you have one, that's, you know, hey, whatever. And most people I know that have them, um, like, uh, let's see, I believe um, Paul over at International Scale Modeler, uh, Will Pattinson, you know, with the, with the, the Smithsonian group there. I'm <laughs> just messing with you, Will. Will Pattinson um, or um, myself and a few others. Very rarely do we use them. All right, let's put this back together. That's clean. Um, I'm going to flush it real quick with a little juice. Just to make sure, see if any crud comes out. And they say a little bit of there, a little bit of nastiness came out of there, but nothing much. So I'm going to dry this off, and we're going to we're going to go to that nozzle now because the nozzle's in there. And for that, I need the glasses. So, do you need these paper points? Half a dozen or one sixth of the other. You know, it, it's it's your thing. Again, it's your money. You do what you want. You don't need them all the time. Half the time, you'll be kicking yourself in the ass because you ruin them when you're trying to get them in and out of there. So, no, you don't really need them, guys. They're good to have, though. I, I would suggest you get a couple of them, though, a box of them, just in case. All right, there's the nozzle. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll take my needle and I'll do this. Because if you can... Guys, here's the funny thing that I get all the time. Let me back up a little bit here. And, and, and here, bear with me, ma'am. You see these? Yeah, you're going to run them in and out, in and out to clean them up. You got a needle, bro. Use the goddamn needle. Why would you spend money on this when you can use this? Now, I'm not telling you not to get these because I use them. I use them myself for extreme. It's very rare that I have to use one. The needle itself will take care of what you need to get out of there. If you drop this in a thinner, uh, a mineral spirit, a lacquer thinner, uh, uh, enamel thinner, you know, acetone, a good UMP cleaner, it doesn't matter. It's going to loosen stuff up in there. And then you take your needle and you just do this. And there's the crud right there. Right there. Whatever was in that needle will come out. 
Now I'm going to show you with a paper point that half the time you don't need these. I'm not saying that they're not a good idea. I'm just saying half the time you don't need them. So good 80% of the time you don't need them. What's up, Lee? So there. Ah, darn it, I can't get this thing open. It might be this, this might be still close. Hold on, I got another one here. No, this one here. China, man, China. Okay, there it is. It was stuck. All right. Now we're gonna grab a paper point. Now here, you grab one out. These are the right there. You want a wet one. You get it over here and right through your knee, right through. Now I'm going back and forth, turn it, back and forth, turn it. I'm going to run it all the way up in there, come out. Now, so you notice that I have not switched these out. This is why I'm telling you half the time a paper point, you don't need it. There. Let me get this to zoom in. Do you see that? There is nothing on that paper point. Nothing. The needle pulled it off, pulled it out. There's nothing on that paper point. So 99.9% .9 of the time, guys, you don't need paper points. You don't need them. The needle, just slowly get in there and turn in it. If it's soaking, you loosen up the stuff on the inside, you loosen it, you turn the needle up a little bit, that's what will clean it out. One more time, here it is. Here's the paper point. Soak it in cleaner. Stick it inside there, turn it back and forth. Nothing, nothing, look, nothing. This will, this will clean out most of your stuff. I suggest, guys, if you have an old needle, to keep the old needle. It doesn't matter if it's an Iwata, Harder, and Steenbeck, uh, uh, Grax, uh, a Badger, uh, Ching Chang, Charlie Wong. It doesn't matter. Just keep the old needles because you do, you know, you can do this. Now, the old, make sure that the needle is fits to that nozzle, though. So if you got a 0.3 nozzle on there, you got an old 0.3 needle, you can use that so you don't damage your other nozzle. So you see this? There's nothing on there, guys. Nothing. All right, before we put that back in, I showed you this. This is the, the four rod. I always polish that needle. Doesn't matter if it needs it or not. So I'll run the needle up and down, especially at the tip, because this will, if you, if you wiped it down, you got all the cleaning you know, the gunk off of it, you just do this and it polishes it up real nice. All right. Take your red gab or a lot of needle juice. Uh, what's the other stuff? I got it in the back there. You can use, you know, so you take this. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. This is the first time I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll do the whole needle. And after that, I'll, whenever I do it, I'll just do the tip. So just right about here where it moves back and forth from that's about where the 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 seal would be. I don't do the whole needle. It's a waste of time. Not that you this is a waste of time, but you know, you just really don't have to do it. So there. Yeah, that's done. So we'll get this all put back together. This is a pressure fit. So you just sit that right on here like so. Some people put wax on that, some people don't. I don't, I don't need to. So you drop that on there. Just like so. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, let me give this a wipe down. Forgot about this. I'll go in here. There's nothing on there. Come inside here. Nothing. All right. So we're gonna put a little uh, beeswax on those um, threads. So, and I only do this when I tear them down. So once every couple of months. That's all I need. Take the beeswax. Let me get that off. Put that on the threads. Make sure you don't get too much on there. 
run that all the way around. There. Stick that nozzle back on. Make sure it's it's sitting on there really good. Like so. Take your cap. Get that on here. Run it all the way down. Like so. I'll wipe off the excess. There it is there. Take a look at this little guy. He needs a good cleaning. This is the nozzle cap. Make sure there's nothing in there. I'll clean that out real good. It's nice and clean. Clean the end off. Let me put a little bit on that. You notice I put it on every, um, all my threads. So I'll just add a little bit on either side and then let the, the twisting of the cap do the work. Okay. And I'm not going to torque it down too much. I'm just going to give it a bit there. Same thing with this one, a little, whoop. All right, let's get this put away. This out of my way. Now let's let's put everything back together. With a badger, you got these fun, funky, um, Got that in there. Got that. Come on, don't move, don't move. This is what I don't like about these things. I wish Ken would uh would make them connected to that to that one part. Oh my Gilbert, add that in there. It's kind of hard to do this with that um here with the camera right in front of my face. This is the other part before I get to that. I'm jumping back and forth. But you see what I'm doing, guys. I'm, I'm just generally, look at that. Just generally just cleaning it out. Um, this I, I drop a little red gab on this because it moves back and forth. So I'll pull this off. And then right about here. Because that's where the spring is. A little bit on there. So I'll put a little bit like that. Like so. I'll get this on there so I don't lose it. Now this has got to go in on here in a certain way. So this will lock in upside down like so. Turn that. Get this to go in there. Make sure this is moving back and forth. I'm going to get my little trigger assembly. God, I hate these things. I always did. Come on. There we go. Oh, shit, it turned on me. Excuse me. I'm not. Keep spinning. It keeps turned around on me here. So. And that's why it's locking up on me. 
back this out again. Oh my Gilbert. There we go. We've got this piece here that keeps floating. So you get this in here like so. And then you gotta put it just like that. You get your trigger in. Make sure it helps and moves up and down like that. And then just turn this all the way. I always have a tr I always have problems with this one. There we go. Turn this all the way down. It is um I'm adding uh beeswax, Jonathan. I'll show you. This is just beeswax. You can get this anywhere. You can get it on Amazon. You know, a little a little square block of it. I've had this for years, man. I can't tell you how long I've had this. I don't. I think I got it at at uh like a Joanne Fabrics or something in this little container. Um, I haven't seen them. Um, I can't find a, a, this container at least. So. But you can get it on Amazon. It's beeswax, just simple beeswax. Um, you know what else you can use? Um, Burt's be uh, the, the the lip balm, the Burt's bees, because it's beeswax. It's natural beeswax. You can use that too. So you can get that anywhere. You know, hardware store, gas station, Burt's bees. So let's get this back on. I don't want to tighten it too much. Well, slide. This piece back up. Well, first off, let me make sure. Now, there, this th this thing right here, guys. When you turn this, this is how you tighten this piece in. But then you have another piece, and let me zoom in a little bit. You have um, because I've been asked that question. I you know, this piece right here, this little in the back, this little uh, nut that moves back and forth. That's for the tension on the spring. You can loosen it for your draw here. Or you can tighten it. What I usually do, I like it all the way down because I like it. As soon as I touch that trigger, bam, it hits. So that's the way I use it. Yeah, anybody, you can do it any other way you want. But that's what that little screw there is for. It's a tension tightener you know, for the spring. So then we slap this back on. I always hold my needle like so. I push the trigger down. Run this through until it stops. Don't force it. Just run it until it stops. The minute you see that stop or you feel it stop, you're in. You go bam, 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 bam. We're done. That's how you clean an airbrush, guys. There's, you know, um, it's very simple. It's intimidating, especially like with the, with the Iwata. Um, and the Badger Chrome ha also has the, the small needle, uh, the nozzle, very small nozzle. Um, you can use... These also, to get inside that shaft, this is, you know, like into dental picks. You can use these versus these. This will get you a little, you know, these don't go too far in there because of the way they are. Um, see, versus this, you know. But this is this is good to get, you know, you can clean a, a nozzle out with it, you know. You can clean a nozzle out with this or you, um, the inside of it. This is not bad if you don't have one of these. I would suggest getting a couple of these also. Um, yeah, th these are not bad to have, guys. They really are. Um, I would, I would tell you if you need them, just get one pack of them. You know, your needle, you saw it, your needle can do most of that pulling out as long as you let your nozzle soak. Um, you don't need absolutely, I gotta have these, I gotta have these. That's bullshit. You don't need them. But just good, they're good to have. Um, they're good to have because eventually you're going to need something smaller to get in there. Um, you can also use a, um, a small brass rod, um, like a, a wire. If you take a wire, you know, like when you do, a, I don't know, something like this, you know, a small piece of wire that will run in there. Something soft to get in there so you don't ruin the, the, the nozzle. But here, let me show you that uh, everything's running right. Um we got it all cleared out. It's easy to clean the goddamn airbrush. You don't. It's not rocket science. You don't need uh, wizardry to do it. Um, let me get all this put away.
You saw what I used. I used, I soaked that, that nozzle in acetone. Flushed it in Jesus juice right here. It's all right here. This is the Jesus juice I used to flush it out with. Um, there's a little bit of cockeye in there. And I'm going to end up cleaning a couple more airbrushes today. So I'll leave that in there. But um, I've got this guy running. And um, I'll just put a little water in here. Just to test the spray, because after a while, after you've been doing it for a while, you don't need to run fluid through there. You can just run a little water. Let me zoom in and show you guys that she is spraying perfect. Get this down a little lower. Right there. I don't know if you see that. Perfect. Look at that. Nice and clean. That's it. Um, let me check some of these uh, comments. You guys got any questions? If there's any questions, man, while well, I got everything out right now, man, I'll be more than happy to, to to answer them. I'm not look. I'm not an expert, guys. I don't know everything about them. This is the way I've been doing them. There are other people that clean their airbrushes different ways. There are other people that go out and tell you you got to buy all these products to to do it. You know what? Get yourself a good thinner. Uh, whether you're using what I used or you use the UMP thinner, you you know, whatever you use, the uh, the UMP uh, um, airbrush cleaner, Createx has a good airbrush cleaner and restorer. Um, Badger has a Spectra, a Spect, Spectratex. Um, Spectra, they, there's good stuff out there, guys. You know, I make my own because I like it different levels of strength. I make my own. That doesn't mean that the other the stuff out there is not good. I use, anybody that knows me knows I use Iwatas and I use Badgers. I have uh, I have a few other different, uh, I got a Harder and Steambeck. Eh, you know, that thing, that's probably one of the most finickiest airbrushes I've ever had. To, my, my uh, you can't run stuff to it, man. The damn thing, you know, it, it just plugs up right away. And um, it's good with ink, and that's about all it's good for. Um, if you're using acrylics, man, the damn thing just... Jams up. I've even had trouble shooting um, uh, lacquers through it. I don't know what it is. So it just, it just, you know. Now I know uh, Baltazar, the basement modeler, Baltazar Medina. He loves them. You know? So it's just a preference thing, you know. What, what are you comfortable with? All right, let me check some of these. Let me turn this air compressor off. We have uh, again Vinny Maroney. What up, Vinny? What up? Lenny Buckley was having trouble there. Brian is trolling me. <laughs> Uh, Daniel Bowers, I hope that, yeah, Daniel, you know what? I have an, uh, a sonic cleaner, like I said. Um, very rarely do I use it. I'm not saying I don't. I have, a, you know, somebody uh, not too long ago, a few months back, sent me uh, an airbrush that the the needle was literally jammed in there, and I couldn't get it out. I mean, I soaked it and soaked it. It wouldn't come out. I dro dropped it in a, in a sonic cleaner, let it go through. I mean, after taking off this part. I let it, let it sit in there for a couple of revolutions and just kept working. It finally broke loose. Did the sonic cleaner do it? Eh. But it, it, it cleared it out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I you, for what we do in the hobby, you really don't need a sonic cleaner. But if, hey, if you just want to throw the parts in there and don't do what I just did, then, hey, by all means. Um, Joe McClassen says, wait, we need to clean the airbrushes? No one tells me this crap. Back to hairbrush for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lee Williams, what up? Jonathan, I hope that, yeah, that was uh, uh, beeswax, my friend. Uh, Tony Parada, hey, Gil, I tear it down every use. Overkill, maybe, but had the experience with acrylics. Only shoot enamels and lacquers now. Where can I buy the little nozzle wrench and the two-pin wrench for the bottom valve I want? That's where I need to get into and clean. You can use the same chemicals uh from yeah yeah you can use the same uh tony now you can go over to coast airbrush um are you, i think you're talking about this kit if you buy this kit you can get this kit on amazon if you look on amazon it's the the iwata um airbrush cleaning kit whatever they call it but you can get this on amazon this comes with the wrench it comes with a, a little uh, a tube here where you can put a spare, a couple of spare um, needles in. Two seal wrenches. These are two seal wrenches. It comes with one of these. This is for your nozzle. You could 
nozzle uh, uh, wrench, and then you have this that comes with it. This is for the for the air valve. You got two different sizes. I believe this one will do the uh, the revolution or the eclipse, and this one is like for the HPC S and up. So the, it comes with it. I don't know if they sell this uh, separately, uh, Tony. I'll have to check. But yeah, um, Coast Airbrush has it. Um, Amazon, you can find this on Amazon. It's not cheap though, Tony. This is going to run you about eighty bucks. Um, but they might, you might be able to find that wrench on its own. Um, I don't know. Oh, uh, not a question about cleaning. Just want your honest advice. Uh, this is from Roger Honing. I'm looking for a new airbrush, and budget-wise, I stand about 150 euro. Was thinking, thinking about the 105 or, or H, uh, the Evo 201. Which would work? Okay. Roger, 150 euros, so you're looking at about 200, 200 dollars. Am I correct, Roger? U.S. dollars. So, hey, hey, Howard. Here's what I would, I would, I would ask you, Roger. What are you going to use it for? This here, and, and and the reason I ask that is, look, there's three airbrushes here. I can do almost everything with both of these with this airbrush here. This has got the equivalent. Badger has a different way of, of, of how they classify their needles. But this one here has the equivalent of, I would say, a, five, a 0.5 needle. This is the Badger, uh, the, the Badger Patriot 105. This is the Badger Chrome. This comes with a fine or an ultra fine needle. This one here, you can start getting into about a, three, a 0.3 needle, 0.2, 2.5 needle, somewhere around there, a millimeter. This you can do... Um, Real small detail, um, like like say her face was done, you know, could be done with a with a chrome, you know, a little bitty, uh, um, I don't know, stuff like this. Uh, you get into little guys like this or something like this. As a matter of fact, um, when I get ready to paint this guy, um, this is that uh, Bondi little Bondi Millennium Falcon. I'll probably shoot it with a base coat using this, do most of the colors with this or this, either one. So it depends on what you're going to use it for, Roger. Um, the harder and steam back, the Evolution 201, um, like I said, uh, the basement modeler, Baltazar Medina, he loves it. Um, but I don't think he's shooting primers and clears through it. Um, this one here, I can shoot primers and clears through it and have no problem. You can also convert this down to... To, to a smaller needle. Um, you just buy the needle conversion kit. Um, I, I, my honest opinion would be to go with the, the and, and again, you could either go with a, a, an Iwata, a Revolution or Evolution, or the Badger um, Patriot 105. It all depends on what, what your preference there. I prefer this because I can get it here in the States. I can get parts relatively cheap, so. Oh, you want it for everything else. So you want, uh, Roger, you want to use it for uh, for detail work and stuff? If you're going to use it for detail work, I'd say you get the Badger Chrome. This here is a good airbrush, the Badger Chrome. It, it's a phenomenal airbrush. You can do really nice things with this airbrush, you know. Um, and then you start working up. This is a, 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 a detailer's airbrush. You're not going to push primer through this, although you can. If you bump up the air pressure high enough, you can do it. Um, you can do it with any airbrush, really. Um, but but this one here's got, you can do some fine detail work with the Badger Chrome. This is my everyday go-to airbrush. This is what I use to, to put uh, primers down. I use this for uh, base coating. I, I even do some uh, pre-shading with this. Um, Figures, I do figures with this if I'm doing, you know, certain things. When I want to get into super fine detail, I brought, bust out one of these two. Or I got a bit, uh, and I want a micron. So either one. Um, Howard, hello, Howard, uh, Tony Perot. Thanks for trying. Uh, thanks, yes, for trying separately. I'll check that out. Coast, yeah, Coast Airbrush. Um, so, guys, there it is. Um, it's an easy thing to do, guys. Um, it just takes practice. You just got to be careful not to lose your parts so you know i get yourself either something like this i know badger sells theirs you know there's a tray and badger has a, a cleaning kit and i haven't gotten one yet yeah go figure right ken's gonna kill me but i'll get the dude 
you use my products, but you don't have my cleaning thing? Yeah, I got to get one. Uh, but, yeah, get yourself something, either the Iwata or the Badger uh, cleaning kit, whichever one you prefer. Um, your Whatever your preferred cleaning solution is, I hear good things about the UMP cleaner. I have never used it, so I can't give you guys a, 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 a review on it. I'm going to get a bottle of it. I'll order a bottle of it either Monday or Tuesday, and I'm going to start, you know, check it out because I hear good things about it. So, uh, But for the most part, I use my own. I, I make my own. This is a windshield washer fluid, isopropyl alcohol, and distilled water. That's all it is. Um, I have long since stopped using the, the, the what is it, the glycerin in it. Um, but if you're going to use it for a uh, for a thinner, I'll add a couple of drops of glycerin in it. Jesus juice. Yes, sir, little Joe. There it is, guys. I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Um, I'm going to chill with Mom a little bit after I clean these airbrushes right here. If you guys got any questions, man, any questions, and if I can answer them, I'll be more than happy to. If I can't answer them, I'll find you somebody that does. I don't know everything, guys. I learn just like you guys do. You guys are the inspiration for me. I learn from you just as you learn from me. We learn from each other. You guys have a good day, man. Be good to your families. Love your children, brothers and sisters. Love your children. They're gifts from the creator. This nonsense we're seeing, hey, if you remember, build a damn model, man. You know, maybe if everybody did that, the world would be a better place. Peace.